Thank you for allowing me to be here. I appreciate it. I, I, I'm reluctant to say I may be a better Democrat today than I was four years ago. Those of us who have seen the existing party structure of our opposition up close, I personally know it's a lot worse than we even think. It's meaner, it's more intolerant, it has excluded two thirds, literally two thirds of Alabama from representation. We know what we need to do. We know what we mean, we know what we say, we know how we feel. Most of you don't know who I am. I am, a, am the product and, a, and an American dream to my parents who are no longer here. But my father was uh, orphaned as a child, never finished the eighth grade. He raised three boys. My older brother is a physician. I'm a physician. My younger brother is a veterinarian. We believe strongly in education. We came up hard. If I wanted to see my father, I had to go to the store to see him. He was open seven days a week. We worked hard, we played hard, and uh, we felt like we needed to give something back. I've got 12 grandchildren and five children. My wife Virginia and I uh, are proud as we can be of them, and we have seen what can happen in a state that's challenged like this state is with a party that is excluding two-thirds of the citizens of Alabama. And one thing I want to make very clear today, Alabama's in trouble, and it's in trouble because it's caused by the Tea Party, the Koch brothers, and a lackluster governor who's afraid to stand up for what he knows to be right. With your help and the help of many others in Alabama, I intend to drive Robert Bentley from office and the Koch, bro Koch brothers back to the state line. We, we understand that. I understand better than you understand because I've been in the circles, I've sat in the meetings, I've, I've listened to the conversations. Contempt for the poor, contempt for the struggling Alabamians is rampant in that party and you can see it as they attack women over and over again in our legislature, as they attack the poor, as they blame the poor for their problems and their challenges and that has to change. Even though they profess their Christianity, you can't tell it by the way they act. Decisions about job creation, the education lottery, health care should be made in Alabama, not by the Koch brothers outside our state. If you've been waiting for someone to stand up for you, if you've been waiting for somebody to tell you how we can win, I'm here to do that. I'm not fearful. I'm rounding third, headed home, and we're going to do something good for Alabama. And I'm running for governor because I want to change Alabama for the better, to fight for the hard-working men and women of Alabama, and to free our state from the aimless, even pointless, administration of Robert Bentley. I'm running as an advocate to reform, retool, and expand Medicaid, to provide health care and create over 30,000 jobs for the hard-working people of Alabama. I'm running as an advocate for the education lottery, we can stop spending our money in Tennessee, Mississippi, Georgia, and Florida to educate their children when we're not educating our own. There's no reason for a child who does well in high school not to have his tuition paid for his two-year college, his four-year college, or his apprenticeship with a union to learn how to be a productive citizen in Alabama. We know that we can do that. We don't have to have anyone's permission to do an education lottery. I'm running because Alabama is 49th in job creation, second only in Alaska as far as creating fewer jobs. About two weeks ago, we had an announcement in uh, North Alabama that Remington was coming and was going to create 2,000 jobs. That was the headline. I saw the politicians knocking each other out of the, out of the way to get a hold of a pair of scissors that got the road. The truth of the matter is, is there will be 300 jobs over the next 36 months and maybe additional jobs over the next six years. What we didn't hear was that international paper closed in January and we lost 1,200 jobs. Now the star just took 280 jobs back to Illinois. Our Boaz poultry 
plant closed and we lost 500 jobs, the net, net, net is about a 600 job loss. And we're hearing a lackluster, do-nothing governor on, on the state payroll telling us that he's creating jobs. Robert Bentley's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. He's probably, he's probably a good dermatologist. Probably got a tube of steroids in both pockets. <laughs> but, just, but, he, but he's not a brave man. He's failed Alabama. He's failed to do job creation by refusing to reform and retool re re Medicaid. He's actually putting lives at risk in Alabama. I'm a cancer specialist. I've been in the trenches. I signed more death certificates in Madison County, Alabama than any doctor ever will because I was the first board certified radiation oncologist in Alabama. So let's talk about health care a minute. Something I believe that I can speak to. Some of the most trustworthy institutions in Alabama, the Alabama Hospital Association, Dr. David Bronner, researchers at the University of Alabama have concluded that retooling and expanding Medicaid will create 30,000 jobs and pump $2 billion into our economy. Our governor attacked these studies and called them bogus, called his own, his own institution bogus, offering nothing to back it up but the education he received as a dermatologist. But that really wasn't enough for the Tea Party and the Koch brothers. The Koch brothers decided they needed to create a little confusion, so this $1.2 million they gave, gave Troy University, two of the professors there decided that they were going to weigh in on this, on the retooling and the expansion of Medicaid. Well, they didn't weigh in and do a study. They weighed in on the study that UAB did. Smoke and marijuana. They argue that there will be no, this is, this is incredible, they argue that there will be no economic impact or job creation from the massive infusion of federal health care dollars and that it might actually hurt the economy. Well, you know, Flint, uh, Wayne Flint said that anybody who believed that probably had a health problem of their own uh, <laughs> related to maybe some ingestion of some foreign substances. <laughs> so, uh, let me tell you how far around the barn they had to ride to get to that conclusion. This is a quote from their actual study. The only impact the, to the economy created by an additional Medicaid beneficiary occurs when the additional, the additional enrollee uses the system for health services. Oh, really? That's got to sink in. The only impact to the economy created by an additional Medicaid beneficiary occurs when the additional enrollee, the patient, uses the system for services. Yes. Wow. You don't need a PhD for that. Just to show you how silly that statement really is, let's replace health care, replace the word health care, with something almost everybody in Alabama likes. Barbecue. <laughs> If I replace health care with barbecue, the statement reads like this. The only impact to the economy created by a barbecue eater occurs when the barbecue eater eats the barbecue. <laughs> All right, now, I'll tell you what, uh, somebody's being overpaid. Okay, do they really believe that if uninsured Alabamians have access to health care that they won't use it? I know one thing, if the people in Alabama have some access to barbecue, they'll eat a little bit. <laughs> the people of Alabama are hungry for health care. If the uninsured people of Alabama have access to health care, they will use health care. Now, in, in that study, not one time did the folks at Troy mention, mention the lives that we could save, the early diagnosis that we could do, the children that don't have to go to school with a toothache or won't go to school. The mother that works, wakes up in the middle of the night, has a child crying with a tummy ache, doesn't know whether it's an appendicitis or a gastroenteritis, but is afraid to go to the ER because there is no insurance and they can't afford a $6,500 bill and get done every month for it. I feel pretty strongly about that. You know I'm preaching now. Okay. Uh, the, the study 
done by the Troy University folks was designed to create confusion. It came right out of the fevered imagination of the Koch brothers, two billionaires determined to control the government of Alabama and to use their power to deny health care to hundreds of thousands of people in Alabama. You're reading about it. You know they're in every state they think they can control. They have nothing but contempt for those of us who are in Alabama. Governor Bentley and the Tea Party's Koch brothers are working together. The Koch brothers provide the money for a fake study while Governor Bentley attacks the real study that's bogus. Think about that. Did I tell you, you don't know how bad they are, but I do. Did I tell you that? I know it. I sat there and listened to them. Republican Study Conference in D.C. They're on a mission of power. They're not on a mission to help the kitchen tables and children of Alabama. They don't, it doesn't come up in their conversation. It never re rears its head. Health care and education never is there. We have not had one positive, one positive suggestion from the Republican Party about how to influence our health care or our education. All we've heard is no, 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 and our job is to defeat the president. Not once have they said anything about the children of America. Not once have they said anything about it. I'm ready to fight them. And I hope you're ready as well, because I'm going to need every one of you. We, we, we hope. We hope we're fed up. We hope we're ready to say enough is enough.